Hi, so I've had a lot of requests on the videos about the CPU board that I'm using. Uh, people have noticed it's not the standard one that came in the kit. Uh, they want to know what features I've added, uh, you know, why I made a different CPU board, um, etc. So this video is going to kind of go into the various iterations of the CPU board that I've used. Uh, this first one here, um, this is the one that comes with the kit. This is the one that you get from the UK, uh, standard CPU board. Um, has the uh, Z80 chip. I believe this is pull up maybe for the interrupt line, something like that. And some signals over here that need to be jumpered uh, to 5 volt. So I think the, the, the kit that you get from, uh, from the UK currently comes with a newer revision of this. This one is, I don't know, a year or two old. It's, it's the one I got when I first started uh, working on the RC2014. So when I designed my bus uh, supervisor board, I needed to tie um, several of the pins to the the unused extra pins on the RC2014 uh, bus. So those would be kind of off here over to the side. This actually sits in like this. Uh, pin one is over here. Um, so I needed to tie those uh, over the, the bus request, bus ACK, and uh, wait. I wanted to tie those over to the extra pins so I could route them into the uh, bus supervisor board. So that's when I came up with uh, the CPU board that I've used in the majority of my videos. So it's very similar to the original board in that there's you know a big socket for a Z80. Um, instead of just jumpering the, the bus request weight, etc., uh, to 5 volt, I put pull-up resistors in. Um, then I put a header over here that routed all of these over to the extra pins on the bus so there was... Uh, from the side, there's uh, bus act, bus request, uh, halt, uh, wait, NMI, and uh, refresh. Um, several of those I've still never even needed, but I routed them there uh, anyway. So here is, uh, I also put in a footprint for an oscillator, you know, in case you didn't want to use the uh, oscillator board, you know, maybe you ran out of slots to put the oscillator board in, you could just put an oscillator on the CPU board. Over here is a footprint for a pull-up for the uh, reset switch and a reset button. Uh, in several of my projects, I wanted to mount a reset button on the case, so I kind of put some uh, soldered some header pins in, and then I could, you know, plug my wires in and hook up to the uh, reset button on the case. So this, this is the one that you'll see in the majority of my videos. This one here. So then I decided I wanted to revise this again into something a little fancier. So I came up with. Uh, my final revision of the CPU board. Uh, this hasn't been in very many videos, uh, but I'm going to describe it in uh, this video. So here's the RC2014 backplane. Here is the um, Z80 chip. Pretty much, uh, you know, all of the Z80 address data, etc. You know, it's just hooked over to the backplane. So most everything from here goes to there. Um, we do have some additional stuff. So here is the oscillator. Uh, the oscillator I ran out to a jumper and it just jumpers over to the clock pin. Uh, that way you can, um, if you don't want to use the oscillator, for example, if you want to use single stepper board, something like that, you can remove the jumper. If you do want to use the oscillator, jumper it and then the uh, onboard oscillator will be selected. I believe here, here's a MAX 811 uh, power on reset circuit. Uh, so that is a surface mount chip. So I've done a separate uh, blog post on Z80 reset circuits. I don't know if I did a... Uh, video on it or just a text post on on the website but whichever it was that'll explain more about uh, various reset circuit options so without a power on reset the, the CPU won't always reset when you apply power to it uh, sometimes it'll just come up in a broken state you'll have to push the reset button so the power on reset circuit uh, takes care of that for you there's a couple of options one is this surface mount chip the max 811 which is designed for this you know it, it monitors the five volts it's got a voltage reference if the voltage browns out, then it will automatically reset the CPU for you. Uh, so basically it's got a power, ground, uh, reset output to the CPU, and uh, option for manual push button. Now if you don't want to use um, the reset circuit, I did put a solder jumper that you can just solder across. So then you'd have no uh, power on reset capability, but the reset line would be coupled to the onboard switch and coupled to this jumper. Uh, so the jumper is here for people who want to uh, put a reset um, switch on your case or something. You know, I've got a three-pin header comes out, and you can plug in your switch. 
you only need two pins. Um, you need the ground and the uh, reset pin. I also ran five volt out to it because, you know, five volt can be ha handy if you uh, need to power an external circuit of some sort. Um, so here we have the, uh, the various uh, CPU control lines. Um, those all needed to be pulled up to five volt. So in my my first revision of the board, I had a bunch of individual resistors, total of five of them. Here I just used a five pin SIP resistor. And those lines that are pulled up are the uh, the interrupt line, uh, bust request, um, halt, wait, and NMI. Um, this is a 10K uh, SIP resistor. Those all run over here to a dual row header, which lets you um, connect those pins to the extra lines on the RC2014 bus. Now the other thing I wanted to do was to drive some diagnostic LEDs. One of the nice things I liked about my, uh, my bus monitor board, that was the one with the hex displays um, and the LEDs, um, was that you could look at the LEDs and you could kind of get a feel for what the system was doing. Um, you know, the hex digits were, were not all that useful unless you were actually trying to debug something. Uh, but the LEDs, you know, you could look and say, you know, am, am I doing a memory writes or am I doing uh, I.O.? And when you see those lights blinking, you know that, you know, a certain function is occurring. So it's kind of handy. Uh, so what we have here is 74 HCT04 uh, hex inverter. And each one of these hex inverters um, is hooked up to a control line and it drives an LED. The LEDs have uh, a SIP resistor. Uh, which supplies the ground, so that is the current limiting for each LED. So we have an LED for write, read, um, IO request, memory request, um, M1, and halt. So let's take a look at the uh, completed board. So here is the completed board. Uh, we've got the Z80 CPU, the hex inverter, the optional crystal oscillator, um, here's the jumper that uh, connects the oscillator to the uh, the clock line. I used right angle jumper so it's easy to plug and unplug this jumper um, you know when the board is installed in the back plane. Here are the six diagnostic lights. All of these I kind of bent over to right angle so you can see them from the top of the board. Uh, the current limiting resistor, the SIP resistor for the uh, diagnostic uh, LEDs. Uh, these are blue LEDs. I think I used a 330 ohm uh, SIP resistor. Uh, here's the right angle header for the reset switch. Here is the reset switch. I used a right angle reset switch so you can come in and push it from the end. Uh, here is the pull up resistor for the uh, the CPU control lines, you know, the uh, uh, bus request, uh, halt, wait, um, NMI, uh, interrupt, etc. Here is the MAX811 reset chip. That's, you know, unfortunately that isn't a surface mount device. It's a little tiny four pin surface mount device, but you can uh, you can solder that with a traditional uh, soldering iron. And then here is a double row uh, header that lets you tie all of those uh, bus control lines uh, to the extra pins on the bus. Uh, there's a couple of bypass capacitors, one over here by the oscillator, one over here uh, by where the power goes into the CPU. Okay, so here I have uh, removed the uh, the original CPU board. I've removed the clock board. I plugged my uh, my CPU board in its place. Um, me apply power. So power came on. RC twenty fourteen uh, basic. Uh, you can't see my terminal window, but basic just came up. Uh, I can you know hit. I can hit the return key, and I'm sitting at a basic prompt. Uh, so the LEDs, it looks like three LEDs are always on. And the reason is because th those things are on a lot. And so those LEDs that, that are lit up here, those are the read LED, um, the memory request, and the M1. And the reason we're seeing those lit up essentially all the time is because the CPU is constantly fetching instructions. Whenever it fetches an instruction, it uses the, uh, the M1 line, it uses the memory request line, and it uses the read line. So we're seeing you know, instruction fetches occurring at uh, eight megahertz. So if we had some kind of a slow clock, we could we could we could slow that down. But uh, uh, for the purposes of this demo, you know, we're running at full speed. So let me do something that generates some I/O. So I'm going to do uh, just a basic program that's just going to print "Hello World" over and over again and uh, run it. 
So now I don't know how easy this is to see on video. If I had something uh, dark I could shove back there. Like this uh, floppy disk. How's that? Uh, you might be able to see that faintly lit is the right LED and the IO request LED. Uh, the right LED is lit, that's this one here on the very end. Um, that's being lit up every time there's a memory write or an IO write, either one, uh, they're both happening. Um, you'll note that the, uh, the basic interpreter, it, it has a lot of variables that it stores in RAM as it's running, just in interpreter state. So it does do some memory writes just while running a program. Um, so the I.O. request is over here, and that's because our, our Hello World program is printing Hello World to the, uh, the, the terminal over and over again. And uh, so there's lots of I.O. operations going on. So if I control C the program, you'll see those two lights, they're not lit at all anymore. I'm gonna try um, another program. This program here that, that I'm about to run is just a, a straight go-to with no, um, with no I.O. at all. It, it's not printing anything to the screen, it's just going to, uh, just going to loop. So let me run that. Um, and there we see, um, down here the, the right light is uh, lit. Uh, the I.O. request light is not lit at all because there's absolutely no uh, console I.O. going on. But there is that sort of constant churn inside the basic interpreter down here, uh, writing its uh, state variables. So as you may have noticed, um, the board I just demoed, several of the lights are just they appear to be just on all the time because you know the CPU is running, constantly doing M1 cycles and reading memory. So I built this second one. Um, thought let's do another one that. Uh, only has the LEDs on the lines that actually do various um, interesting things. So I hooked up a, an orange LED to uh, write, a green LED to uh, IO request, and a red LED to halt. And I think this one, at least for my purposes, will be a little bit more useful because I won't be distracted by blue lights that are almost constantly on. I'll only see the ones uh, that have meaning to me. Okay, so I've got to be kind of quiet here because the baby's actually sleeping and you don't want to wake up the baby to make a video, that'd be bad. So we're looking at the board with just the three LEDs, um, the amber one being right, the green one being I.O. request, the red one being halt. Let's turn on the RC2014. You probably saw a really quick flash on the amber and the green. Um, that was just the startup as it printed out on the screen. It would have printed out, you know, RC2014 basic press enter to continue or whatever it prints. So let's go over here into the terminal. Connect to serial com 6. Um, so let's do the same two programs I did with the other boards. The first one is going to be the Hello World. So print Hello World. So this first one I'm about to run it, it's going to print Hello World to the terminal um, over and over again. So running it now. Uh, we can see that the uh, green and the amber lights uh, both lit up. Green one is lit up because we're doing I.O. requests. The amber one is lit up because we're doing uh, writes. Now those writes are both I.O. writes um, for the serial output and they are memory writes for the state of the uh, basic interpreter. So let's control C that program. And now let's do the uh, one, this, this one I'm about to start now is just a straight go-to loop. Uh, no terminal I.O. so we should not see the green light. So let me start it now. So as we can see, the, uh, the uh, orange light is lit up. Um, the orange light signifying that we are doing uh, writes, those have to be memory writes that are due to the uh, basic interpreter updating its uh, state. Um, the red one, you're never going to see that light up running RC2014 basic or ROM WBW or uh, the other CPM distro I've done. It's because those never halt. Uh, you will see it light up if we were running um, you will see it light up if we were running the uh, the Fusix uh, Unix distribution that I demoed before because the Fusix does actually halt. So Fusix halts whenever it's idle and then it gets woken up by an interrupt, you know, like serial interrupt, disk interrupt, etc. 
Uh, so that's it. Um, I am considering another revision of this board. Um, it'd be nice to have separate lights for IO read and IO write and memory write. Um, we could do that with a NAND gate. It'd be nice to add a capacitor, resistor, something like that to add some delay to these LEDs so they'd stay on a little longer so that when there was just a single very quick operation, uh, we'd actually see it. Because otherwise, there's just a single operation. It goes by so quick that, that we never actually see it. Um, so I think this has been a success. I kind of like this board. Uh, it's something that, you know, when I turn on my project and it doesn't work, I can look down on it and I can see, you know, is the orange light lit? Is the green light lit? You know, is it actually doing something? Is it halted? It's turned out kind of useful. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.